From State Department. United States and Côte d'Ivoire launch child protection compact partnership activities. Official websites use.gov. A.gov website belongs to an official government organization in the United States. Secure.gov websites use HTTPS. Today, United States Ambassador to Côte d'Ivoire Jessica Davis Baugh, First Lady of Côte d'Ivoire Dominique Ouattara, Deputy Director of the Office to Monitor and Combat Trafficking in Persons Brian Marcus, the Minister of Employment and Social Protection Adama Kamara, and the Minister of Solidarity and the Fight Against Poverty Miss Belmont Dogo provided opening remarks marking the official launch of activities under the U.S. Côte d'Ivoire Child Protection Compact, CPC, partnership. This partnership is an historic non-binding multi-year initiative to address child sex trafficking and forced child labor in Côte d'Ivoire. Implementation of this jointly developed partnership will strengthen the efforts of the Ivorian government as it works with national stakeholders and civil society organizations in a sustainable, coordinated fashion to combat child labor trafficking. The CPC partnership was signed by the government of Côte d'Ivoire and the United States in December 2022. Two implementing partners were then selected to carry out activities to fulfill the agreed-upon objectives, including better coordinating prevention efforts and targeting them across the country, providing protection services that are readily accessible to child trafficking victims using a trauma-informed and victim-centered approach, ensuring justice sector actors utilize existing trafficking-specific legal frameworks to identify child trafficking victims, investigate cases, and prosecute and convict perpetrators of child trafficking in a child-friendly, victim-centered, and trauma-informed manner, and promoting coordination across relevant ministries, civil society, local communities, and foreign counterparts. The TIP Office, which leads the department's global engagement to combat human trafficking, selected the University of Massachusetts Lowell, UML, and Save the Children to implement partnership activities. UML is conducting a 12-month formative research study on child trafficking in Côte d'Ivoire, while Save the Children will build the capacity of Ivorian justice sector actors, improve case management, and strengthen anti-trafficking coordination over the next five years. For further information, learn more about the Office to Monitor and Combat Trafficking in Persons or follow the Office on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So, once my dog lets me, I will try and get in again. Right? Yeah, I know what you want. I know, but we're going to try it one more time. And by the time I'm done doing that and talking, I've had enough, I'm sure. So, hello to Vladimir. So, a couple things before I check out from this whole thing, because nobody enjoys this. No, I don't. We'll go in a minute. Stop being a boss. Okay. Families that come to the attention of the child welfare system are required to collaborate with agencies and courts since when? Bullshit. That is so against, like, every constitutional right that we thought we had. So, again, this is not me writing this crap. This is your agency. Not Congress, not the president, not your judge, Supreme Court. This is your agency, the Children's Bureau that is led by Becerra. Now, the OMB needs to address this ASAP. Highly recommended. We all know why I'm here. The fact she is designed to help parents. In parentheses, birth, foster, and adoptive. So understand when they use that word in the vocabulary doesn't necessarily mean it means you. They're going to switch it to their own convenience. Uh, Preservation or reunification. Is that not seeing enough of words for you? They have a reunification camp in Santa Cruz. If you're not aware, be aware. Um, This 
agenda thing that they have going on. It, it's as simple as, I don't know how many times I have to say it. You can't say it's a civil rights violation to separate people and judge them positive or negative based on those sections of race, age, gender, etc. We all know what they are. You can't use those from the prior year to categorize people being that it's a civil rights violation and then base your next year's risk number and what you're going to get your values from for your stats. Give me a break. Oh, now they can check two boxes. Give me a break. Give me a break. Figure out a different way to categorize people, maybe by the abuse that they do. What did they do? Are they sexual abusers? Are they violent? Uh, I don't know. What other kinds are there? You guys should know that, not me. I am a victim of risk. Nothing ever happened until you guys came in the picture. So from there, I think I've said enough. And if you work there and you're coming across this, they will threaten you too. If you leave their agency, you're putting kids at risk, is what they tell you in these books. Okay? Supervisor's manual. I'll tell you that. You're putting children at risk because of their high turnover. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Maybe they should look at the issue that they're doing to their own instead of just categorizing it by the illegal categories. Evolve people. There's another way. If you're going to keep letting these foreign infiltrators and people with bad intent for our country control, get what you deserve. I tried. Out.